We're back on shift inside the ambulance. It's a Sunday morning, man. What the hell? If I'm awake, they're awake. We're with the West Midlands Ambulance Service. Point to me where the pain is. You still with me, Hannah? No. Yeah? As they face more heart-pounding action... Can you feel me touching you? Yes. ..and more medical emergencies... You thought you were going to die? You're going to be fine. Battling over 4,000 calls each day. Can you pop that back on there again, just over the top? Hold that on. We'll have to roll you a little bit one way. Oh, how do you feel at the moment, Petal? Oh. What's that from? There are some new faces. I do think we work well together. We make we? a good team. Yeah. Do you think I look like you, back? Is that what you're saying? No comment. <laughs> and some old friends. Hoffman? Thanks. I don't know, you turned on the sausage. <laughs> <laughs> Don't panic, just move out me way. Body mounted cameras record every moment. Did you bump your nose? Give us a kiss. Come on, man. <laughs> to show you what goes on behind closed doors. There's lots of equipment on here. There's loads, isn't there? Yeah. Look at that. People knock the NHS, don't they? And I'm just wiped your nose twice. You'll be on the front line with the ambulance crew as we take you inside the ambulance. Come hello, high water, we're coming. Nine, nine, nine mode. Activated. I love that. All aboard the fun bus. Oh, it's a Sunday morning, man. What the hell? If I'm awake, they're awake. The sirens on the ambulance go, Beedle, Beedle. No. Booba, booba, booba. <laughs> Great to be back at work. Fabulous. Fabulous. Living the dream. In the West Midlands, it's an unusually snowy spring day. Crewmates Tina Spittle and Donna Parcell have just started their shift. This weather, seriously. I'm being very selfish, but I've straightened my hair this morning. I can't believe it. I haven't even washed mine this morning. Dry shampoo. Oh, no, I washed my hair last night, last thing before I went to bed, which is why I had to straighten it this morning, because I literally was like, poof, and it was just like this. I was like, oh, dear me. It's not long till the first job of the day comes through. OK, so we're going to a rollover by the sound of it. Two patients trapped, one man climbed out and on the floor. The car has rolled over, currently on, the, on its side, smoke coming from the engine. Male 50s, two women trapped, a, approximate age 20s. Male that's out the car, cut to hand and injury to leg. Women injuries unknown. The accident, involving three known casualties so far, has closed all three lanes of a busy stretch of the M6. Here we go, look, the signs and they're going up. To get there, they first have to fight their way through the traffic that's built up behind the crash. Stay there, HGD. Well done. You don't know which carriage no, way is on but there, this is the there. emptiest. Yeah. But see a police car. Something up ahead. Police and fire teams are already on site. But Tina and Donna are the first ambulance crew to arrive. Hello! Right. Driver, calm down himself. Just okay. the vehicle to a chat. Okay. Conscious and breathing. Yep. Uh, it's just about the time gonna make it at the moment, so. Okay. The accident happened when taxi driver Ali was hit from behind, causing his car to flip. Ali managed to get out, but his passengers are still stuck inside. You see to him. I'm going to have a look at the other one. As the only two paramedics on the ground, Tina and Donna have to split up. Hello, my sweetheart. All right. You stay exactly where you are. Don't move. All right. You got any pain anywhere? 
nothing at all. Okay, what I want you to do, don't nod your head, don't shake it, okay? There will be a lot of noise, okay? It is going to be the firemen cutting the car apart, all right? I don't want you to worry. They will not hurt you. They're just going to cut everything apart so we can get to you, okay? Are you the driver of the car? Yes. You are, yes. okay. Do you remember what happened? I don't know, just behind me, somebody boom. Okay. I can't know, just that's I remember. Okay, lovely. Behind what? me, boom, and the car tick, 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 tick. Okay, keep still for me. No, no, I'm okay, I'm okay. I need to check you out first, okay? I'm okay. Let me check you. Oh, sorry. Please, sorry. Can, please sorry. can I check I'm you? Sorry. Okay? Have you got any pain? Huh? Pain. Pain? No, only, only in here. Only there, okay. Can you feel me touching you? Yeah? Yes. Try and relax, 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 no, relax. Just I know. Cool, cool, just look at me. Cool. We're going to get you off the floor shortly, OK? I just want to make sure that you've got no injuries. OK? Let's have a look at your hand. Yeah. So Ali was clearly in shock. He insisted that he was OK, but he'd been in a, a very serious collision on a motorway, so it would have been at high speed. Sometimes they believe that they're OK, when actually the shock is masking injuries that they don't realise they have. Listen, right, if we get you to your feet, OK, if you have any pain, no. any pain at all, you need no. to tell, OK? No, no I'm OK. I'm OK? Ready? OK. One, two, three, four. There we go. OK? Right, we're going to get you in the warm, my darling, OK? No problem. Right. Right. Don, can I leave you to assess him? Yeah, thank you. Ali can remember some details from the crash and that a vehicle rammed into him. He's understandably anxious to know more. Right then, my lovely. Ali, please, please, if you, if you do a favour. What's that? Please, just do a favour with me. Yeah. I have a drive, I don't know who hit me from the back. OK. And the car, boing, that's okay. what, just, just check. The, pl the police are here as well, OK? Yeah. Yeah. They can look at the cameras and we can sort that Please. out. Yes. OK. I, I have done. OK. I know you said you're fine at the moment, but you're cold, you have an injury to your hand and your leg. Can I deal with that, OK? So I need to check your blood pressure, OK? And at the moment it's going to be really high. So nice and relaxed, OK? We've got the heaters on to get you warm. I'm Donna. Hello, Donna. Sorry about this, Donna. Oh, don't you. Don't apologise. It happened. Accidents happen. But we're going to get you sorted, aren't we? So. Yeah, the big risks in a, a car accident are spinal injuries, uh, head trauma and broken bones. So I wanted to fully check in to make sure there was no serious injury. When you hit your head, yeah. did you go woozy? No, straight away, no. No? OK. No. Lovely. OK. I'm going to cut your trousers yeah. to have a look at your leg. Is that OK? Yeah. Yeah? yeah? Lovely. You've got your thermals on as well. <laughs> oh, don't blame you. Don't blame you. The driver of the car that hit Ali's taxi fled the scene on foot after causing the crash. One of the policemen has some news. Please, sir, sir. Gosh, yes. please. Did you catch it or something? Yes, he's under arrest. Yeah, he's got handcuffs on. You sure? Yes. Drink driver, I think. Oh, oh I swear to God, yeah. he's behind me. Boom! Boom! Ambulance crewmates Donna and Tina have been called to the scene of a major road traffic accident on the motorway. Do you remember what happened? I don't know, just behind me, somebody bumped. OK. I can't go. Just that's I remember. OK. While Donna is trying to work out how serious taxi driver Ali's injuries are... I'm just going to feel down the front of your leg. No. no. Pain? No. no. OK. Tina is with his passengers, who are still trapped inside the overturned car. We were just wondering, what we sort of made the space? Yep, yeah, we need to get them straight onto a trolley. Which one is going to be out first, do you reckon? Well, if we've got to do that control, if they're happy to self so Get that one out first. Yeah, yeah that's fine. So, did you say you got pain in your neck as well? Just a little bit. See, okay. if I keep do your head little still. bit, that, I that. think, I think keep about the the dom dom dom. It may okay. be like this. Nice and the still. head. Not here. Little bit down. 
down, down, is this one. There. Yeah. But what I want you to do, keep your head nice and still, OK? Yeah. The fire crews have cut the trapped passengers free. A third ambulance arrives, meaning that Tina and Donna can now focus solely on Ali. Thankfully, any serious spinal injury has been ruled out by a doctor. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. So the main thing is that everybody's got out and everybody is well. Everybody's out, everybody's okay. Happy? Uh, whenever you're ready. Any pain at the moment? Only a little bit in this bump, my head. Yeah. And a little bit in my neck. In your neck. On the when neck. I move, pain. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Okay. And my hand. Uh, I Hands a bit sore. Yeah. Bit. After his eventful morning, Ali is looking forward to getting home to his wife and three children. Do your family know that this has happened? No, we'll be honest, no, uh, uh, my wife, she's sleeping. So, OK, what time uh, would she wake up normally? She normally, uh, Sunday, wake up with the kids like 10, 11. OK, so, so then she doesn't need to be told now. Let me get you, because it's only 20 past 8. Yeah. I want to give her yeah. a call, yeah. Yeah, no once you've been checked call, over, then I you can call her. her. Yeah. yeah, and just let her know. We, we arrive. We're here? We're at Sandwell. That's good. Okay. Here we go, okay. We'll get you in and get you looked at, darling. And we'll get you in the warm now, although his clothes are steaming. <laughs> As the shock wears off, the A&E doctors will be able to assess Ali for broken bones and internal injuries. Well, that was an interesting job, wasn't it? It was. But thankfully, nobody was seriously injured as much as we can know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, they could do more considering tests. Considering what had happened, you know. Considering the, the speed of the collision, yeah. considering the vehicle damage, everything else... It, they are very lucky yeah. to come out with care, potentially so. just cuts and bruises yeah. but it just highlights why people shouldn't should drink, drink and drive because it is not acceptable and you're putting lives at risk for the fact of having a glass of wine or a pint of beer yeah it's not acceptable Conundrum. What cheese is made backwards? Oh, um, I don't know. It's okay. I'll give you all day. Cheese is made backwards. Edam. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'd high five you if you weren't driving on blue lights. It's a sunny winter's day, and crewmates Matt Rodwell and Holly Welsh have been on shift since 6.30 this morning. Oh, I feel like I need my sunglasses today. Yeah, sunglasses and woolly hat. Yeah, no. <laughs> The pair soon receive details of their next job. We're going to a 95-year-old female who's apparently vomiting blood with a chest infection. She's probably aspirated and it's probably really poorly. An on-call doctor is waiting for the crew to arrive. Hello. Morning, mate. You OK? Yes. Thank mate, you. Doctor, How are you doing, Doc? 
How are you doing, sir? Hello. I recognise you. Yes, I do. The last time Matt was here was to see 92-year-old Horace. But today it was Horace who raised the alarm for his wife Beatrice when she started bringing up blood. She was confused and had vomiting. And she's also had noisy breathing with cracks in chest. Okay. Feverish, 30 years temperature. How are we doing, young lady? I've seen you before. And you're a young man. Yeah. She sounds incredible. Yeah, she does. Isn't she? Wonderful, Doc. You can get yourself off. No problem, thank you. Beatrice. My name's Matt and this is Holly. 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 She doesn't look like a Colin, it's a Holly. <laughs> Sweetheart, are you in any pain at all? No. And you can't talk. Oh, bless okay. you. 77 sets. Okay, let's pop that out from underneath you. Can we try and get you sat up a little bit, sweetheart? That's uh, it. Chuck us those pillows, honey. She's terrified you're going to put her in a home and I'll tell you down. No, we only want to check her no, over. No, you ain't going into no home. Oh, that's as much as I can do. Okay. Have you got any other... Let's lean you back, sweetheart. Hello. That's fine, that'll do. Is that a bit better? Hey. Is that a bit better now you're sat up? Yeah. OK. Let's have a quick listen to your breathing. When we walked into the room, you could hear Beatrice's breathing. She sounded very chesty, very crackly, and that's generally a sign that there's lots of fluid on the lungs, regardless of what type of fluid that is, and generally it's a really bad sign. Beatrice, yes. can we get your dressing gown off, sweetheart? I'm sorry, I know you're not feeling very well. It's I know, not sweetheart. Very nice. I know, but could you want a temperature? We could do with just cooling you off a little bit if we can. You just relax, just relax, just relax. Look we'll at this oxygen on you. I'm sorry, there we go. Can you lift your head forward for me? There we go. How's that? I'm going to have a quick chat with the partner. Sir, and what does your young lady suffer with? Any heart problems? Any heart attacks? No. High blood pressure? No. Where did she... One... That's all it's on. One tablet a day. All right, sir, thank you. Beatrice is normally in very good health, which makes her current condition even more worrying for Matt. Beatrice? Yeah. When you've been vomiting, have you been vomiting on your back? No, I just... I'm sorry. And just... And you... Have you rolled over and been sticking to there? When did the vomiting start? Last night. Last night. And have you got, had any tummy pain beforehand or anything? OK. All right. Beatrice was struggling to breathe. Her breathing was really poor. Uh, we weren't sure whether that was because she had an underlying infection or whether something could got stuck from the vomit. We've got to be quite careful then because if she's got vomit stuck in her airway and it shifts, it can block it and then it can stop her from breathing. And at that point, that's really dangerous. My darling, do you mind if we pop you to the hospital because you're not very well? I know you don't want to go. But we need to, sweetheart, because you vomiting up what you're vomiting is really quite bad. It's all, there's lots of it stuck in her throat, mm. which is why I'm very keen to go. OK, my darling, open your mouth for me. Say, ah. Uh, it's obviously vomiting, it sounds like vomit, but if we just lodge it and send it further down, I'll yeah. be even bigger problems, so I might, yeah. ju I might just leave her. OK. I'm just calling the hospital. OK, mate, no problem. My darling, how old are you? You're wonderful looking for 96. Hi, mate. Sorry, I've got an alert for you, please. Um, I have a 95 year old female. Um, we've been called for hematemesis and query chest infection. It's all stuck in the throat. I can hear it, I just can't suction it. Right, Tom, maybe bye. Right. How do you feel at the moment, Petal? Whenever you're ready, Holly. Matt wants to keep Beatrice as calm as possible to avoid her breathing getting any worse on the short trip to hospital. 
How's your breathing feeling? Okay, Petal. All right. You're doing really well, darling. You're doing really well. Relax for me. There we go, darling. There we go. She sounds worse now when we got to her. Okay, my angel. Gonna be a few bumps on the way down. Okay. Here you go, girl. Beatrice will now be seen by doctors who will try to clear her airways and get to the bottom of what is making her so ill. Well, that last was poorly. Yes, yeah, absolutely. I oh, didn't Beatrice. expect it to be that bad. No, she was, she was sounding awful, didn't she? Yeah. It <laughs> almost sounded like she was drowning. It was, it was awful. I popped in. Yeah. And they said she coughed up about 40 mil worth of this brown, oh, wow. brown, sticky vomit sputum. Really? Yeah, it wasn't ideal. She was poorly she was. You know, a canal is a canal. But in the West Midlands, it's called a cut. Yeah. Well, you don't call a river a laceration, it's a canal. Okay. I've never heard the word gumball until I uh, moved up here. Did you not? Nope. Can you do a gumball? I can do a roly poly, yeah. <laughs> it's a type of pudding, a roly poly. A jam roly poly. A jam roly poly around here. It's a dessert, sorry, dessert, darling. <laughs> <laughs> Paramedics Gaz Clark and Lee Timbrell have been mates for years. I had a really weird dream the other night, and I hope it was one of those dreams that, you know, something happens in life and then you think to yourself, I'm sure I dreamt that recently. Yeah. I really hope this one comes true. Because I dreamt I won a million pounds. I hope that dream comes through as well, because I'm your good friend and permanent crewmate from now on. <laughs> Before long, their next job comes through. New 25-year-old female, query sepsis. Temperature of 40, had a hysterectomy last week and is currently on antibiotics. Sepsis is one of the UK's biggest killers. It's a dangerous complication of infection that needs urgent attention. Given her recent surgery, Gaz and Lee's patient is especially vulnerable. Right left side. Emma is waiting for them with her mum, Belinda. Hi, Emma. Hi. This is Emma, isn't it? Hi, I'm Lee. This is Gaz. Emma had a hysterectomy five days ago as part of her treatment for cervical cancer. Right. What's happening, Emma? I just. I woke up this morning and I'm really shaky and I feel I feel hot and then I'm really cold. Mm -hmm. I'm just sweating and I just keep feeling really fine and I can't eat anything. Okay. Yeah, I haven't eaten for a week. I can't um, stomach anything. Right. So you got up feeling hot, shaky. Yeah, I got up at about three and it's hard for me to get up in the night anyway because I have to get up on my own. But I felt worse than I've ever felt. And then my mum, I fell to sleep. My mum come down and I was literally I was dithering, but I was she was, was hot. Roasting. Yeah. Was she really just, hot to touch? Yeah. Okay. Any pain anywhere? It must have been where my scar is. Let's see what your temperature's doing. Thirty-nine point nine. What have you got on underneath that jacket? Just this. I'm freezing. Right. You're not. Right. You're actually cooking. You've got a massive fever. Thirty-nine point nine. Should be thirty-six point nine. Without this on. You start calling down within 20 minutes, you'll feel a lot, lot better. Okay. So we're going to do some more checks on you. Yeah, yeah tucky. Yeah, she felt it on the wrist. This means your heart rate's going a little bit quicker. When we first started examining Emma, it was a case that she had a high temperature, which also meant she had a high heart rate. It's important to consider sepsis, especially since she's had a major operation and it's a route of infection. So, on a pain score of 0 to 10, 0 is no pain. Yeah. 
How would you score it 0 to 10? About an 8. So it's beyond the point of being bearable. With high pain levels and a sky-high fever, Gaz and Lee decide to give Emma fast-acting intravenous paracetamol. Your temperature is up and you've had recent surgery, so we have to go on the potential that there is an infection. If that infection gets so bad, it yeah. becomes sepsis. And the only way of making sure everything's absolutely perfect is a blood test. Hence, we'll be going off the hospital. Are you going to be better sitting on a chair or on the bed? Yeah. Um, I can't lie down, now. No, we can sit you up with your legs out in front of yeah, you. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that way you haven't got to walk again. It's however you need to be comfy, though. Yeah, because I can't That's the main thing. And your mum can't even wait to be invited on. She's got to come <laughs> running up behind me already. Mum, have a lovely. seat. I never knew you were going to keep your slippers on as well. You're not the patient. I know. There we you go. Do that. Yeah, that's way better. Yeah? Yeah. Since her recent diagnosis of cancer, Emma's been in and out of hospital numerous times. Have you been to New Cross Hospital recently? Yeah, yeah. So you are known on the system? Yeah, that, that, yeah that I address. was originally having all the treatment there. Directly for cancer. I was there for about three, three and a half years. Mm -hmm. So they said, like, if... Because I, I originally said, what if I started trying for a baby now? And I went for IVF. And she said, you wouldn't make it through the nine months. Yeah. She's like, so you'd be having a baby and you'd, you'd be left without a mum anyway, so what's yeah. the point? But he's put me down for a wound transplant. So in the next five years, yeah, I've freezed all my eggs and everything so I can go through it. <coughs> so I can say, but obviously if I have this wound transplant, I can use my own eggs. Yes. But I said uh, I'm going to be 30 then. I didn't want this one to be 30 anyway. So what's that pain score now? It was an eight inside when we arrived. Five. Uncomfortable but bearable. Yeah. I do feel so much better. You look it. Your face is like brighter. Yeah. See, you saying that makes it look like we actually know what we're doing. <laughs> I've been looking at you now, but like, what was the puzzle? Oh, I was just hot. <laughs> Yeah, compared, oh, yeah, compared to how you looked when we walked in. At the hospital, Emma will be seen urgently by doctors who can do blood tests to rule out sepsis and find out what's causing her symptoms. Yeah, so our young lady's not had much luck. I couldn't believe how young she is. Yeah. Diagnosed with cervical cancer and had to make the choice to have it all removed. Yeah. But the surgeon's also done it in a way that's preserved the ovaries. Yeah. And is pioneering um, wound transplants. Mm. So potentially in five years' time, she may. Yeah, to have, have a wound transplant. transplant. And still be able to have kids. Yeah. So never know, possibility in the future. That. You should have gone before we left. I did. Nine seven. Can I, that? Can I stop at this isn't to have a pee? Oh my god, you've got that size. You'll have to walk special to get to the loop. Of course, you can. <laughs> 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 My legs are well crossed, Jane. Thought it'd kill me. <laughs> Feel better. I feel so much better now. <laughs> I'm so relieved. In Dudley are crewmates Ollie Raven and V Hodgkins. 
999 mode activated. V is a veteran paramedic with 18 years service under her belt. They've worked together on and off for three years, and V mentored 24-year-old Ollie through his ambulance training. Uh, we have got here a 74-year-old male we've got who's uh, phoned 111 by the looks of it. He says that he's got the flu, he's got diarrhoea, um, but the concerning part is his blood pressure apparently at 2 o'clock, so 45 minutes ago, was um, 79 over 49. Ah, oh, the pad low. Just a bit on the low side. Very low blood pressure can be a red flag that a patient is deteriorating rapidly. Ollie and V need to get to him as quickly as they can. We've got those silent sirens on again. The ones that only we can hear. Hello. The crew arrive at the home of 74-year-old John, whose daughter Natalie and dog Gizmo are waiting to guide them in. Hiya. Hello, doggie. <coughs> Hello, is it John? Hello John, my name's Ollie. This is V with me. John has a series of health needs including heart and kidney problems and his wife Margaret is his full-time carer. However, since getting the flu, he's had a sudden deterioration and has become increasingly unresponsive. Your hands feel very cold. <coughs> you, you went ill last Tuesday and on Friday um, I had the doctor and she diagnosed flu. Over the weekend, we deteriorated and I had the on-call doctor. He stopped the antibiotics because he'd started the diarrhoea. So he only he had four. how many lots of antibiotics did he have? Four. Okay, yes. She'd up and today he's gone really, really poorly. I have been taking his blood pressure. Okay. Um, that was his blood pressures last year. And, and okay. Today's. Okay, then, so it's been... Yeah. That's what it's been, but now it's 79 hours. <coughs> okay. All right, don't. Right. Don't panic. We will sort him, OK? That's, yeah? How low does he normally? What's he normally? No, he's normally anywhere between 150, 130 ish, all right? Systolic. And I'll run. grab some loop. Yeah, has that come up? 49. OK. 32. OK. So when we received the job through, um, the report was that his blood pressure was 79 um, systolic. Um, which is, is low, is, is very low. By the time we got to him, it had plummeted down to 49 systolic, which is, is very dangerously low, um, critically low, in fact. So our number one priority was to, to raise his blood pressure. The best way that we can do that is with a large cannula into his arm and um, rapid fluids to, to raise his blood pressure to make it safe for us to be able to get him down the stairs and, and to hospital. I think it's more the dehydration, if I'm honest. John, yeah. You pop your tongue out, John. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think that's the route. Let's I'm see if we can get this BP up. Right, then sharp scratch coming up. Just hold that arm there, nice and steady. We'll sort him out, okay? Don't worry. The important, he needs to go to hospital. So we're going to try and get his blood pressure up with the fluids. All right. Um, so that we're able to get him to a sitting position, because if we try and sit him up properly, he might pass out because his blood pressure is low. 5-7. 5-7, go ahead, Thank you, yes. Could I trouble you, please? Uh, red back up uh, to help uh, get a patient out, please, with low blood pressure. I'm just going to leave it with me, ever. A red backup is an emergency call-out to a second crew. As soon as John can be moved, V and Ollie will need extra help to get him onto the ambulance quickly and safely. We'll get this fluids into you and see how we're looking, OK? You feel rotten, don't you, John? I bet. With a blood pressure like that, I would feel rotten. Do you feel dizzy? No? Yeah, you do. Yeah. Lost a lot of fluid, haven't you, from this, di this diarrhea? Mm -hmm. oh, that was 77, we're getting there, we're getting there. Better yeah. than it was. Blood Did pressure's it. coming up, all right? With the drip beginning to work, John is becoming more responsive, but he needs to be stabilised, and for that, Ollie and V have to get him to hospital as soon as possible. They're going to help us carry you out, John, OK? Because your blood pressure's too low for you to walk, all right, and you'll pass out, which we don't want. 
It's a very cold day, so Ollie wants to make sure John is warm on the way to the ambulance. Ta-da! It's even got some ear warmers on it, look at that. Be funny if I put it on back to front, wouldn't it, and cover your eyes? <laughs> To stop John's blood pressure plummeting again, he needs to be kept as flat as possible to try and keep his blood circulating properly. Well done, John, well That's done. Good. That's, That's brilliant. We can probably feed the rest of that. Up. That's yeah, yeah. okay, put them down now, put them down now. Well done. Well done, John. That was brilliant, John. There you go. Just like shuffle your bum downwards. Oh. That's it. That's, That's good. good. Again. That's good. Fantastic. Okay, try How that, guys. Pop the pillow behind your head so we don't donk your head when we go down the stairs. Oh. Technical terms, John. Donk. OK, we'll just use the stairs. OK, just nice and slowly so we can all get together. All right, John, move your left leg for me. That's yeah. it. OK, you're about to come down the steps. That's your first step. OK, got it? Yeah, yeah. OK, just tip his legs down a bit for me. OK, everybody? Yeah. All right, Ollie? Yeah. You okay, John? <laughs> okay, first step. I'm on, I'm on the bottom step now. Okay, first step for you there, Adam. All right. Yep. Ready, steady, lift. Oh. Ready, steady, down. Brill. Can we go, Well done, guys. Go, John. A couple more bumps. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Let's have this arm. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All observations are coming through thus far. John is joined by his wife, Margaret. Ollie and V still need to monitor him to make sure his blood pressure doesn't drop back down to critical levels. If you had to give your pain a score out of 10, John, 10 being the worst pain you've ever had in your life and zero being nothing. Where would you put it at the moment as you lay there? <coughs> Seven. Seven. John, we can't, the next sort of pain, because he's had paracetamol and codeine already. Yeah. We've been morphine and his blood pressure's too been, low. been too low for morphine and we've got it up now, but oh, the next step of morphine does is lower his blood pressure. Oh, so it, that's the wrong, the wrong thing to do at the moment. So we're not being cruel. With such a high-risk patient on board, Ollie calls ahead to the hospital. Hello, Russell Hall. I've got an alert for you, please. Uh, I've got a 74-year-old male. He's got a, a weak history of diarrhoea. Uh, initially, his blood pressure was 49 systolic. He has now had a litre of IV fluids. He's laid flat with his legs up and it's still only 98 systolic. Um, and we'll be with you in about nine minutes. Thank you, cheers, bye. You still okay, John? Yeah. Just six minutes into the journey, John's condition worsens again. John, I'm gonna set some more fluids up, all right? Just because your blood pressure's dropping again. All right, just to let you know. I'm just stand, standing up in the back, V. Okay. His blood pressure dropped again despite him having a lot of fluids from us and even being lay flat with his legs raised. His blood pressure began to drop again to a level that, that was likely to spiral down back to where it was initially. John's wife thinks she had an understanding of, of how unwell he was um, and it, it was part of our role to remain calm and, and instill confidence. That's perfect, I'm happy with that. We'll go with that, and tissues as well, they're this end. Look at that, people knock the NHS, don't they? And I've just wiped your nose twice. Here we are, we're just gonna park, get you inside. John will be seen by doctors who can run tests to try and work out exactly what's causing his dangerously low blood pressure. Well, John wasn't very well, was he? John was not very well. That was a proper working job. He was, yeah. He was very close to 
being to, unconscious. To being, being unconscious, unconscious. Um, and then and then not not far after that, it it can get get worse. Um, he's got potential to go into organ failure. Of course he did. Of course he could easily die. What was really good, Ollie, for me, as your former mentor, <laughs> was you just cracked on with it, gave him all the right treatment, and it was, I, was, I was very proud to see you doing what I did, you know, what you helped you and trained you to achieve, and that, that was good. Taxi driver Ali, who was involved in a major crash on the motorway, has been suffering with pain from whiplash. However, thankfully, the injuries to his hand and leg have healed nicely. Beatrice had been so poorly and was vomiting blood due to a severe chest infection. She was kept in hospital for three nights for treatment, but is now back at home with Horace. Emma, who'd recently had a hysterectomy, turned out not to have sepsis, but had a blood clot in her pelvis. She was kept in hospital for 24 hours before being discharged to continue her recovery at home. Tests confirmed that John's blood pressure had dropped to such dangerous levels due to dehydration from a virus. He was in hospital for four days and given more fluids and medication to get his levels back up to normal. He's now being well looked after by his family. All in all, it's been not a bad day, has it really, mate? It's been... Uh, it's never a bad day working with you. It's never a bad day working with you. <laughs>